Today we're talking about the most jacked tooth doctor you've ever seen. The evil, vile Cobra Science Officer is Dr. Mindbender. Before we start, let me thank you for watching JL's Comics, whether it's your first time here or you're back for more. Don't forget to share this and subscribe so you don't miss all of our videos we make each week, just like this one. Let's get on to our video. Once upon a time, the man who would come to be known as Dr. Mindbender was a regular orthodontist that you'd really find in any town in America. He was always at the forefront of his field and, in fact, developed a machine which was intended to relieve pain from orthodontics. During one fateful test, which he performed on himself, mind you, caused him to go mad. He kept his scientific mind but suffered from a mental break thus transforming into Dr. Mindbender. With his new identity, he created Pythonization, a treatment which would render Cobra vehicles undetectable to radar and infrared. He also developed BATS, the Battle Android Troopers. Mindbender debuted in issue 44 of Larry Hama's comic book series, and in that issue he was using another creation, the Creeper Bomb, which was basically a plant with sleeper agent pods that he used on Lady J and her G.I. Joe recruits. And this is how he was accepted into Cobra, who needed someone to replace Dr. Venom. Mindbender created the Hydro slides that were used against the Joes, and the mission also resulted in the apparent death of Storm Shadow. He took Storm Shadow's body, packed it on ice, which he'd be using very shortly. It was immediately after this that Mindbender went grave robbing with Destro, stealing DNA from the greatest military and political minds from all of history and bringing it all back to his lab in Springfield at the Museum of Antiquities. He injected it all into a lifeless body, infusing it with Storm Shadow's mystic and modern knowledge, and then overlaying the entire thing with its own mind and allegiances. Thus, his greatest creation, Serpentor, was born. When Cobra Commander was thought dead, Serpentor rose to power, and one of his earliest acts was selling Mindbender's terror drones to warlords and oligarchs and dictators. They wanted to upset the balance of power, destabilize already unstable nations and regions, and insert Cobra in those vacuums of cracks of power and control. The first buyer was the South American country of Sierra Gordo. Mindbender and Baroness were there in the midst of counter-revolution to help facilitate the destabilization of the country. But later, the base's secret came out in a place called Frozen Land. It was revealed that the base emits low frequency sound waves to induce paranoia and incite civil arrest but the Joes took care of that. Later, Dr. Mindbender created a Star Viper, which was an enhanced pilot which could operate the stiletto plane. The Star Viper is the one who was able to infiltrate the pit and steal a vital black box from G.I. Joe's space shuttle, which is called the Defiant. By the time the Star Viper returned to Cobra Island, Serpentor and Cobra Commander were drawing lines in the sand, their feud boiling over into a civil war. Mindbender during the civil war sided with Serpentor. He took the black box to Washington, D.C. and promised to return it to the U.S. government if they helped, and they did sending the G.I. Joe team for aid. But once Serpentor was taken out by Zartan's arrow, Dr. Mindbender actually cut a new deal with Cobra Commander 2. He took Serpentor's body away though really quickly, hiding it in a freighter on Cobra Island. He had to hide the body away from Cobra Commander, who didn't want him to try to resurrect his creation Serpentor. The black box that the Star Viper stole had the location of the base in it, so Mindbender staged an attack on the pit. Joes were aware, and Mindbender was met with empty huts, sand, and failure. He was humiliated. When Raptor approached Mindbender with a plan to exhume and bring back to life the original Cobra Commander, Mindbender said okay, wanting to redeem himself. The OG CC was alive, ambushed them, and then threw everybody in that freighter, blew up the volcano, and buried it with all the traitors locked inside. Issue 114, we learned that most everybody died from botulism and spoiled poisoned sea rations. But this is not the end of the story, the story of a physician who mastered life and death itself. Mindbender stored his DNA and memories in the same computer used to create Serpent. In the town of Millville, one of the citizens shattered the cloning tank that his body was in, a portable brainwave scanner. Mindbender's body was dumped on the ground in a puddle of fluid, and the electricity from the damaged scanner surged through the body. He was reborn. In non Hama non Canon 2004's issue 37, we learn that Mindbender had made 11 other clones along with Serpentor, all of whom had been hidden away from Fred Seven and Cobra Commander. One of these was sold to the jugglers, that corrupt, shadowy cabal of generals at the Pentagon, and this clone that they bought became General Philip Ray, although he was programmed with a trigger word, which gave Mindbender and Cobra a sleeper agent at the Pentagon. Mindbender was ultimately killed here, but Serpentor's cult, the Coil, created a new Mindbender clone, a new Serpentor. When Mindbender reappears in Homiverse, it's with issue 157, where Snake Eyes was captured and subjected to the brainwave scanner. Mindbender discovered the location of the pit by tracking satellite blackouts over Utah and discovering C-130 tracks in the sand just after the blackouts passed. So he attacked the pit with a phalanx of bats. Ace dumped a double dose of paveways on the bats, so Mindbender ordered Wild Weasel to drop his bunker busters. But after an intense aerial duel, Ace took down the Rattler. 
Back in Broca Beach, Mindbender was tinkering with his brainwave scanner when Dr. Venom came up, tormented by the ghost of Quinn, but beckoning Mindbender to follow him on his path. Mindbender refused, destroyed all the equipment in the lab in the process. And in issue 174, he's actually talking with Cobra Commander in a limo about weaponizing molecular monofilaments just as they step out for Billy's funeral. Later, Cobra took over a town in California, renaming it Rancho Corba. And just as the first helo landed, three kids tagging abandoned buildings were captured simply for seeing them. Clutch and Rock and Roll got involved, but both wound up captured and brainwashed with the brainwave scanner. They were red flag back at the base, taken off duty until issue 192, where Rock and Roll remembered what happened after being zapped during a lift incident. In issue 227, this new girl named Dawn came under the guidance of Cobra Commander. She was about to kill Destro, but Baron has stopped her. So in issue 229, she has to go to this Cobra Super Brainwashing Center for Cobra indoctrination. Zorana and Baroness messed with the programming that Maya Mender had calibrated and accidentally downloaded Snake Eyes' memories into Dawn, setting her up to be the new Snake Eyes. Later, Maya Mender tracked down Wade Collins to his home and took him and his family hostage. Then, in issue 239, they take a U.S. Senator to hostage and and subject them all to the brainwave scanner. The upgraded scanner could actually selectively implant and delete memories, and he performed these upgrades after that incident with Don Moreno. But this is when Don and Wade's daughter, Heather, assaulted the place and found Mindbender. Snake Eyes took over Don's body and threw Mindbender into the brainwave scanner seat, and this is where Dr. Venom took over Mindbender's body. Venom had been living in the computers, so he was living once again. And in the next issue, this Venom Mindbender gave himself a complete makeover, ditching the monocle and the cape, shaved off his facial hair, he put on Wade's wig and suit and strolled out of the building as Dr. Venom. Cobra Commander said, you don't look like Venom, you look like a shaved Dr. Mindbender with a bad rug. So in issue 256, Venom wanted to upgrade himself. He got two options, a giant robot or an android storm shadow, and he chose the giant robot. This allowed Mindbender to get control of his own body back. So then he actually teamed up with the android storm shadow and the G.I. Joes to take down the Dr. Venom robot. A Joe by the name of Sightline lost his leg to the machine before they took it down. Later at the pit, the Joes got a suspicious package in the mail. It was a thank you from Mindbender and schematics for a robotic prosthetic leg for Sightline. It was nice of him. Later, Cobra Commander and Mindbender developed plans for a new brainwave scanner, this time with tech from Revanche. They're playing more with Revanche tech, and actually in issue 266, they sneak a little Revanche surveillance bot into the pit to spy on the Joes. It's destroyed quickly. It continues to be right at the side of Cobra Commander, plotting and scheming as only a dastardly orthodontist can do. <laughs> My Mender was seen frequently in the Sumbo cartoon where he was voiced by Brian Cummings. He first showed up in the Arise Serpento Arise series kicking off season 2 as he conspired with Tomax, Zema, and Destro to steal the DNA samples to create Serpentor. He wanted to do this to make a competent leader for the organization, someone who could lead them to greatness, which was not Cobra Commander <laughs> in his eyes. In the cartoon, Shipwreck knocked a vial of chemicals right out of his hand. Well, the chemicals landed on My Mender's head and that's how he caused him to lose all his hair. In G.I. Joe the movie, it was the leader of Cobra Law, a villain named Globulus, who gave Mindbender the idea to create Serpentor. And in another movie, 2009's Rise of Cobra, Dr. Mindbender is portrayed by Kevin O'Connor. And in the movie, it's Mindbender who gave Rex the nanotech, which played heavily throughout the film. The name Mindbender is the final name, of course, that we wound up with, but he took a journey to get there. His primary MOS was supposed to be Cobra Interrogator, which would align with the way he's referenced on Serpentor's file card. Larry Hama commented that people might be upset about a toy whose specialty is interrogation and torture techniques. There were issues with wording on Zartan's file card and Master of Mind Control seemed to land a little bit softer. In Mark Belomo's Ultimate Guide to G.I. Joe, we learned that Hama suggested Professor Payne, Count Vlad the Cruel, and the Inquisitor as possible names. The original file card, the one not used in production, had him as Dr. Question Mark, like the actual punctuation mark, not the words. That original file card says that he was really an IRS investigator by day and a guy illegally practicing dentistry without a license by night. It said, quote, Some believe he was a professional wrestler with the ring name Vlad the Cruel. And since we're talking about alternate names, he was called Dr. Cortex in France. Ron Rudat said he needed an interrogation prod. He gave him his bare chest and cape because, as Ron puts it, it made him look tougher. Then he gave him a cattle prod-like device, and, and then this toy as a V1 figure went into production and hit toy shelves in 1986. 
And he's had a few different evolutions through the years as well. While most of his file cards and profiles says his true name is unknown, we have a couple clues as to his government name. In 2008, Larry Hama wrote a 23 and a half issue called A Day in the Life of Springfield. It was part of a 25th anniversary release that came packed with a CG, a Cobra Elite Trooper. Anyway, in this issue, he's referred to as Dr. Binder. Then that same year, 2008, G.I. Joe vs. Cobra, The Essential Guide, gave him the name Dr. Brian Bender. So there you have it, the full story of Dr. Mind Bender. And that's a wrap on this one, my friends. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, corrections, and suggestions down below. Don't forget to subscribe so you can be a part of all of our videos new and old. And check out our playlist. There's tons of Joe content there. I'm Jesse. This is JLS Comics. And I'll see you soon.